Thank you. It's always fun to be the last before dinner <laughs> or lunch. <laughs> um, my today's uh, short talk is uh, about using the FFV1 codec for something for which it was not designed. In, this is my table of contents. In fact, I submitted to the organizing committee three proposals of short talks, but uh, it was too much for the schedule of the conference. And therefore, I spent the most of my time on the present. But past, present, and future has to be taken cum grano salis, as always. Let's start with the past. Uh, the majority of the current film scanners use Bayer pattern sensors, as we have heard, and codecs like Cineform RAW or the new ProRes RAW allow to store this data, but the current FFV1 version 3 doesn't. I, I suggested in my last year presentation at the time to wait number two in Vienna, FFV1 should implement in the version 4 the possibility to store and handle natively buyer-based content as well. This and the following two slides are slides from my last year's presentation. Today we have to debuyer the raw data in order to store the generated RGB or YCBCR data into FFV1. This means that we have first to blow up the data and then to compress the data again. And I will store the raw data di directly without these two steps. I cannot make here a live presentation of a working implementation of Bayer in FFV1. Uh, we do have one in our company, and I know that uh, Jerome is uh, working very hardly to have uh, another one, and uh, I hope that it will be made in FFV1 version 4, and Jerome hopes that it will be in 3. So let's see what happens. <laughs> but work is going on. Regarding the present, uh, I am trying since a long time to go beyond uh, RGB because the RGB is not al always sufficient for the work we are doing in restoration of very damaged uh, content, film content. There is a need, an increasing need, I would say, to store multispectral content from, of moving image as well and uh, this is done since many years in other fields of conservation and restoration, and I think we should do that in cinema too, in some cases, not always, but in some cases it can be very useful. I have uh, worked out a very quick and dirty hack to store on FFV1 version 3 such kind of data, and in FFV1 version 4, I hope we will have a better solution. Four weeks ago, we have presented uh, a self, both a self-made multispectral film scanner. It's about 20,000 uh, euros or dollars, so you name it. And a video codec to work with this kind of content, for example, by using the restoration suite Diamant. This way, this might be useful not uh, for not standard color systems, and I am thinking in particular at the two color additive systems that were used in the 20s and the 30s of last century. Or I am thinking about a very, very decomposed reel where any additional information is useful for the restoration work. I cannot make a live presentation either, of the video codec at the moment, but uh, we can handle multispectral uh, moving image and I use the screenshots. This is the help of the, it's very small help of the, the codec and if I call the man, the man page, manual page, I have more details and it gives me some options. Um, as usual, the options can be passed in the newer 
Linux style or in the older Unix style. Later, later is the only possibility for the less common options because I like more the Unix style personally. Firstly, there is a mode to, a mode to select because I have put all the commands all in one command, encoding, decoding, playing, and um, analyzing the file, as well as extracting their met technical metadata. Secondly, you have to choose an input and an output file, and uh, there are pros and cons uh, regarding fake RGB or uh, FFV1. If you work in fake RGB, then the pros is that it's faster to process. It takes less time. If you use FFV1, it takes, it takes more time. But if you use FFV1, then you have uh, less need of memory, less bandwidth, because the files are smaller. And you have this data integrity check that is very important in an archiving community. We have implemented the codec with uh, defini defining the Wells lengths, and we use currently Wells lengths from 400, 450, and so on until 1050 and 1100 nanometer. And this is more or less the human visible spectrum, including infrared. It's what is used often in film, in film scanners. And uh, I have. Uh, I cannot show you uh, images here because I was not sure how it was uh, projected and I hate to make a fake uh, uh, higher dynamic range on a REC 709 by blurring some parts and show, see you, on the left it's nicer if you cannot produce that at all. And we have a, a matching vector that gives how it has to match in the standard FFV1. Regarding compression, it's the same discussion as just before. Yeah. I have here the clock too. <laughs> it's the same discussion as just before. Compression is useful for conservation, but not for restoration. As long as I am in the restoration uh, workflow, I need to have uncompressed data because otherwise I, uh, I crash all the available computers. The possibility to select just one band, band or specifically one bit plane inside a band is a very useful thing. I can, uh, for instance, I can check if the if I have a 16-bit workflow, if all the workflow is really 16-bit, because too often I have seen the workflows that at some point they work with 12-bit, and then at the end you have 12-bit. So you can check if in the higher bit you have information or you have just noise. That's done also in QC tool that was mentioned later. Um, this will be published uh, freely available on once uh, a version, a beta version that don't, does need uh, particular IT skills will be available. We hope to have that by the beginning of next year. Regarding the future, just one short uh, word. Um, in many definitions, you see that hyperspectral imaging, ima imaging is uh, when you have a lot of different bands, and often in the definition you find 15 bands. We actually do work with 15 bands, so I don't think this uh, definition is fine. I see more that we replace the actual values, the numbers, with functions, and we work with functions. But uh, that's the future. And if you are interested in uh, this kind of experimentations, please check our website or our Twitter feed. We do a lot of uh, this kind of work, and I think we have left a little bit of time for a question or two. Do we have a question or two? David Pflugo. Um, 
What, can you estimate what that means in respect to file size? In the case that uh, is used uh, FFV1 and I store uh, the 15 strings in five RGB values, then it's five times uh, if you scan multispectral than if you scan uh, not multispectral. But the compression algorithm can be optimized because the, the 15 uh, bands have less difference regarding to the three bands that you have in RGB. So you can optimize quite a lot the algorithm, but you have much more data. That's clear. That's the reason why I said that the, I would not apply in any case, but in case you need additional information, it's a nice tool. Steve McConaughey, um, so so you you implied the benefit or the 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 use case for multispectral imaging, but I wonder, Rito, if you could just say a bit more about what is the benefit over standard film scanning and and why might it only be useful for some cases of scanning, not all. I think today it makes sense only for some cases because of the costs and uh, the, the work that needs to be done because we have just a few tools that are able to manage these data. And uh, in the future it could be a little bit different. But the benefit is that if you don't have enough information inside the RGB, uh, the cyan, magenta and yellow in your film stock, then you can bring up some more information. It gives a little bit uh, a similar result as when you have completely faded films that are red. You can make a special development and you can regain some uh, of the colors or quite a lot of the colors. But it's very dangerous and we don't know if we destroy completely the element when we do that or not. Therefore, we prefer to not apply a chemistry on an old element that we don't know. And with multispectral scanning, we found some more information beside what is defined in the standard graphs of the, the R, G, and B. Excellent. Thank you so much, Rita.